This is the eight announcement by Echo Base Radio Blastland. First of all, we would like to thank all our new members for joining our Blastland community. Many thanks and spasi bobolshu. Listen now to the eight chapter of Blastland. Vault 33. This chapter is made available both in text format and as audio podcast in the Telegram group of Blastland. Watch out for Blastland collection NFTs at Getcom's Tongue Keeper. Only in the early morning did the starlight communicator detect an incoming signal, which was heavily encrypted. After Jack decrypted the message with his Vault Boy decoder protocol, it read a Vault 33. 34.134117, 118.321495. After a hard day of travel, we finally arrived at the hill. The task before us was both simple and difficult at the same time. Even if we did find the right place, how would we be able to organize the removal of the debris in front of the main entrance to Vault 33? It was beyond our capabilities to remove that heavy debris, and we would need special equipment to perform that duty. Jack called that special equipment Blast Crane and Blast Dragonfly. I could remember hearing about cranes and dragonflies from the books I read with Ava. And again, I thought of my dear Ava. I miss her so much. But thinking about Hava once again motivated me to expedite the search. Lilu and her mentor were not far from us and joined in exploring the area. Lilu started analyzing different smells. More and more often, we encountered odors that were not familiar to us. It was alarming because each new smell could be followed by an enemy. Therefore, we acted extremely carefully. Our paws stepped softly and cautiously. In one of my steps, the concrete slab I stepped on shifted and began moving toward Lilu. I immediately warned Lilu, and she promptly bounced to the side. That's what saved her. After that, we found a massive entrance door with the number 33 on it. Jack radioed the lab and told them we'd found Vault 33. The lab responded quickly and sent us a squad of blast dragon flyers. These were massive robotic flying insects with suction cups on their legs. When they work as a squad, they have incredible lifting power because their software allows them to scan objects, applying a special grid scanning protocol. And afterward, they determine where the blast dragon flyers can attach themselves. The Blast Dragon Flyers attached themselves and waited for the takeoff command. They then lifted the heavy objects and carried them to a safe distance away from the Vault 33 entrance door. This exercise continued until the entrance area was clear. Finally, when all work was completed, the Blast Dragon Flyers disappeared into Blast Land and the door of Vault 33 was cleared to be unlocked. It was a huge concrete wheel, which was opened with the help of pneumatic mechanisms. To activate them, you had to enter a code at the Nexus console from the outside. Unlike at Haven Stockpile, someone from the inside of Vault 33 had to confirm the unlock procedure from the inside. Only then would the heavy door open. Jack entered the code we had received earlier. It was a very strange code. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. After five minutes, we heard a distinctive sound, and the door started to open. Inside Vault 33, so many people were already waiting for us. They looked at us with great interest and hope. None of these people had left Vault 33 for a long time. For them, we were a symbol of a new life. This chapter was made available by Echo Base Radio Blastland. Watch out for next chapters in Blastland official Telegram channel. Visit our Blastland NFT collection at Tongue Keeper. 